Uh, hello, my name is Wes Yeomans. I'm with the New York ISO Operations Department. I'd like to talk about the impacts of the August 21st solar eclipse on New York electric loads. I'm sure most people are aware that a total solar eclipse will cross portions of the United States on Monday, August 21st. The diagram shows a blue band of the path of the total solar eclipse. Outside the blue band shows where the rest of the United States will experience a partial eclipse. New York will experience a partial solar eclipse with peak totality of roughly 80%, meaning the moon will cover about 80% of the sun. The eclipse is expected to cross New York from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. with the strongest aspects from about 2.30 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. The last significant solar eclipse for New York occurred on May 10, 1994. At that time, there were very few solar devices in New York. Currently in New York, there are approximately 850 megawatts of rooftop solar panels. Understanding the rooftop panels are not all exactly aimed the same direction, the daily peak solar generation is approximately 625 megawatts, which occurs between noon and 1 p.m. on sunny days. Rooftop solar panels reduce the total load that needs to be served by other generation resources. A reduction of solar generation on cloudy days or during an eclipse increase the amount of load that needs to be served by other generation. At the start of the solar eclipse, solar generation will begin to decrease, hence increasing the load that needs to be served by other generation. But during the middle to end of the solar eclipse, the temperatures will begin to decrease, which will decrease air conditioning and reduce the total electric load. Here the bell-shaped curve is a graph of typical solar rooftop generation on a sunny day. The red excursion curve shows the projected loss of solar generation during the eclipse. And you can see on the curve that the, the, the projection is for about 600 megawatts of solar generation to drop to about 200 megawatts of solar generation. But around 3 p.m., as the moon moves away from the sun, solar generation begins to increase again, moving up from about 200 megawatts to about 395 megawatts. This chart shows the impacts of both factors, loss of solar and cooler temperatures on a typical day. The top curve heat is, would be a heat wave in August. The lower curve would be a very cold day in August. The middle green curve is a typical average August day, which is what we are expecting for August 21st. The bold line, the heavy bold line, is, is an impact of the eclipse. So if you look hard at the green line around lunchtime or 1 p.m., you can see the bold is a little bit higher than the thin green line, and that would be the increased load as a result of solar as the eclipse begins. But, but partway or halfway through the eclipse, as it becomes cooler and we lose air conditioning load, the actual load drops and you can see the bold line is below the thinner green line and that would be the, the reduction in load as a result of the eclipse. So in summary, based on the projected minimal impacts of total electric loads, Additional transmission operating actions will not be needed in New York for the August 21st eclipse. Current operating criteria, generation dispatch capability, and operating reserves will be sufficient to meet reliability. The next significant eclipse will be on April 8, 2024. New York will experience a total solar eclipse. The New York ISO is expecting much higher levels of solar penetration by 2024. The New York ISO is developing improved solar forecasting and integration into transmission operations to ensure electric reliability. Thank you.